If IP addresses are what machines use to reach each other on a network, then how does a machine name that humans use get translated to an IP address? In this video, we will be looking at the Domain Name System, or DNS, which performs that host name to IP address mapping. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button and tell me to my heart. Humans reach out to other computers on the network by an easy to remember name like www.yahoo.com rather than the hard to remember IP address like 74.6.143.25. Using DNS, computers translate the human friendly names to the IP numbers which are more computer friendly. So for example, when I ping www.yahoo.com, the tool is actually doing a ping to the translated IP address of 74.6.143.25. And if I ping a machine that no one knows about, so if I do ping dash C4 of Kali, I will get an error that says name or service not known. How does host names get turned into IP addresses? The first thing that the computer will do is to look at the file called slash Etsy slash hosts. So let's go ahead and do a more of slash Etsy slash hosts. And we see in this file, it's a mapping between IP addresses and host names. So the first entry is 127.0.0.1, and the name is localhost. The second entry is 127.0.1.1, and the machine name is Kane. So these are the IP4 addresses, and the rest of the block, these are IP6 addresses. And similarly, they basically map an IP6 address to a host name. So what this means is that we can ping the machine name and DNS will figure out the IP address for us because it looks in this file. So I can do a ping dash C4 of Kane. And we can see that the machine that's under 127.0.1.1 responds. So for any machines on your local network, you can modify this file so that your machine can map between the machine name and the IP address. So let's see how this works by adding a few IP addresses and their associated machine names. I'm gonna do sudo vi slash etsy slash hosts. And I'm gonna go ahead and add 10.0.2.4 and call that machine Fedora. And then add 10.0.2.17 and then call that machine Kali. I'm gonna go ahead and save the file. So now if I ping Kali using the command ping dash C for Kali, I see that the IP address of the machine that I listed as Kali responds from 10.0.2.17. All right, the host file is great if you only have a small number of machines because every time I add or change machines on the network, I will need to edit all of the slash Etsy slash host files on each machine on the network. To resolve that issue, we can make one of the local machines a DNS server and then keep a master list of machine name to IP address mapping all in one central place. So how do we make a machine a local DNS server? We just need to run a DNS service. There are a few DNS software packages out there for Linux. The most common is Bind, the Berkeley Internet Name Domain. And then another one is DNS Mask, which works great on small scale networks. For this video, since DNS Mask comes pre-installed with Parrot OS, I'm going to run DNS Mask on my Parrot box. So I'm going to do sudo systemctl status DNS Mask. So you can see here that DNS Mask is loaded, but not active. It's not running. So let's go ahead and get it running. So we can do sudo systemctl start DNS Mask. This will create a service that is listening on port 53 for DNS traffic. And I can verify that with netstat to take a look at the listening IP4 TCP ports. So I'm gonna do sudo netstat-4lntp. And sure enough, we see that it is now listening on port 53. Next thing I'm going to do is that I'm gonna edit the slash etsy slash host file on this Parrot OS machine, which is our local server. And I'm gonna add the IP addresses to name mappings for the machine Kali. So I'm gonna go ahead and sudo vi slash etsy slash host. And I'm gonna add a line 
from 10.0.2.17. And the machine name is going to be Kali. And then after that, I can add an alias for the machine name K3. Now go ahead and save it out. And I can test whether this host file is working by doing a ping to the newly added host name. So I'm going to do a ping of K3. And we see a response back. So this is a good sign. Now that we have our local DNS server running, we can ping K3 from any machine on the network, right? So I'm going to go back to my Kane machine and do ping dash C count of four to the, the machine name K3. Now this is going to fail because we don't have K3 listed in our slash Etsy slash host file. And we actually have not specified a local DNS server to point to. So that's why we got a failure. So in order to point to a DNS server, we have to alter the slash Etsy slash resolve.conf file to point to our parent OS machine, which is now our DNS server. If we do a ls-l of slash Etsy slash resolve.conf, we see that it's actually a link to another file under slash run. So what we're going to do instead of editing that file directly is that we're going to create a local copy and then remove the existing link and then create a new link to our file. So we're going to do sudo vi slash etsy slash resolve dot conf dot local. And here I'm going to add the phrase name server 10.0.2.11. So what this does is that it tells the system that for resolving names, it's going to go to the server at this address 10.0.2.11 which is our Parrot OS machine. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove that link by doing sudo rm slash etsy slash resolve.conf. And then lastly, I'm going to create a new link to the file that we just created. So I'm going to do sudo ln-s slash etsy slash resolve.conf.local space slash etsy slash resolve.conf. So now we have told our machine to look at this other machine to resolve our DNS queries. Okay, we have our DNS server running. We have updated the resolve.com file to point to the DNS server. So now we can ping K3 from this machine, right? Let's go ahead and ping dash C4 of K3. And we still get a ping failure. What gives? Well, the last thing we have to do to get this to work is that we have to make sure the system is looking at the files in the right order. The place to do that is the slash etsy ns switch.conf file. So let's go ahead and do sudo vi slash etsy ns switch.conf. This actually has settings for other usages besides DNS. Uh, you can see the password based configurations are in here as well. But we're going to basically focus on the line that starts with host colon. So the default has the word files first, which means this machine is going to look at Etsy host for any DNS. And then we see it has mdns4 underscore minimal, not found equals return, resolve, bang unavailable equals return, and then lastly dns. I'm going to move DNS to second in line and get rid of everything else because we're not going to use it for this particular demo. So we're going to be left with hosts colon files DNS. Now the system will first consult the Etsy host file for the host name. And if it's not there, then it will go to the first name server listed in the Etsy resolve.conf file. So now that we have told our system where the local DNS server is, we can try a ping again. So we can do ping dash C4 K3 and we have success. Without DNS, we would have to remember the IP addresses of every website you want to visit. Not that pleasant. So basically DNS is a good thing. And with a basic understanding of how the Etsy hosts, the Etsy resolve.conf, and Etsy NS switch.com file works, we are now able to set up our own local DNS server to resolve host names for our own local network. For more videos on the Kane Forensics Distro, make sure you watch these videos here. Or if you are interested in learning more about networking, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.